This is Boxing Tickets NA in association with Violent Gentlemen. Um, we're back with the main man, Paddy McCrory. How are you, mate? Morning, very good. It's it's good to see you again. Probably had to be number four, is it? Three, three or four? Four or five, I think. The probably probably okay. people might be thinking that you're sort of paying us to sort of do your interviews because you're on so much. Um, but but I guess in sort of some ways, as you're, you know, the one thing obviously me and you's good good mates and things like that. But the the good thing you're always open to interviews. You know, there's probably other people have inter- have asked for interviews and you had to wait for months to get them. Yeah. So um, you're always there for a chat. You know. That's just the person you are. That you're just there to have a chat, and you know you want to make, you want to put yourself in the spotlight probably as much as possible because you're no you're no spring chicken anymore. No, no, I I got to get people talking. Um, the more people know you, the better chance there is of getting bigger fights. And I suppose that that kind of showed with with um like the movie. Uh, I wasn't long enough to get the fight. Do you know what I mean? So I would do these up like. Freaking all day, so would you probably nearly have to go to you know the probably the, the realms of um, the Paul brothers sort of you know and you, you sort of get it's probably not your nature but but they sort of nearly victimize somebody in the fact that sort of really making a um, a production sort of video sort of slating somebody to get their attention to get them out but then that's not you as a person so there no point sort of being being fake in a way I know you would sort of beef with a, with a few fighters and stuff in the past but you sort of kept it as PC as possible so if you went out with sort of one of them videos today I'd be going Who, who's put him up there you know something up uh, yeah no no uh, no it's not me it's not me it's definitely not um, and obviously the last time we was, we spoke you were six, you, you were finishing off your last session in uh, Dan's uh, performance PPT I can't remember <laughs> what PPT means I'm sure Dan will probably message and go I can't believe you don't know what PPT means. Um, performance, something I know now. <laughs> um, but you were six days out from obviously your fight with Jimmy and Brown, and, and obviously um, you, you ended up travelling over to England um, with obviously a bruise and well, not bruise, obviously swelling in your knee, and obviously yeah. then it ended up materialised that you had three golf balls pretty much within your knee. It was it obviously didn't inflame that much, but um, sort of there was a bit of fallout sort of afterwards, sort of. You know, probably rightfully so. Jermaine probably wasn't happy with the fact that it travelled and and no fight I pulled off. But he, but he seemed to think that you just weren't interested in the fight. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, as far as I'm aware, the post that he put up uh, was took down again. Um, slightly childish, but he I suppose he woke up on Wednesday, hungry, dehydrated. Um, and and then we told you that that the fight isn't on. So uh, I I flew I flew um, thinking that 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 I was going to be able to fight. Um, and as the day went on into the next day as well, uh, things got worse. And I I didn't put in a ten week camp like. like Neglecting like like my like my wife and kids in terms of like like my time. Um, they had to fly like to England for four days just for the crack. Mm-hmm. I, I like um, and ended up I had an infection in my knee. It was called bursitis, um, and it lingered it lingered for well over three weeks. Uh, and it was just unfortunate because see, like as as well as as well as Jermaine Brown was probably probably annoyed and didn't get paid. I I was in the exact same boat. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I I don't work for a long time because of of COVID, so um, I didn't pull out because I didn't fancy a fight. It was just kind of a bit of a ridiculous claim, but uh, hopefully he's seen sense, and that's all I really have to say on that. And, and, I, and I guess, you know, when I was talking to Dee and stuff the, the other week, we were sort of saying, you know, the fact that Jermaine Brown probably doesn't t- know too much about you because obviously if, if he does know much about you, he knows you're, you're not someone that will put all of the work in just to pull out, you know, at the end of the day. You know, probably maybe a good thing he hasn't seen a lot of your fights because obviously you're not there to mess about. You know, you're, you're there to take somebody's head off. And you know, I, I know we'd sort of spoke to you sort of in the build-up you know, knowing that there sort of was a, a bit of an injury there, and, and I was sort of saying, you know, make sure you're 100% because the last thing you want to do is to go into, into a fight and not be your best, because then 
you're just yeah. leaving leaving yourself vulnerable more. Yeah, um, yeah. No, uh, I'm I'm kind of this days now. We're 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 and like, say to be honest, say if I had been 70 percent, I, I would have fought, but mm -hmm. I literally couldn't walk. I couldn't walk. I, I tried to go down and do uh, a squad session just to get up and go away. Uh, and just give myself a chance, but it was it was just it was like it just it didn't work. I like we we landed in England and went straight to Tesco, and we got like anti-inflammatories. We got they go in the different shops and just got loads of different stuff just to try and make it better. And mm. unfortunately, it didn't work. Um, and yes, yeah, there was. It was just like D D as well. Like if they like, refuse to think that I made the fly, obviously D D works off of my fight purse. So D, like they firstly got D D and Don. Like we put in a long camp and they firstly got nothing. Do you know what I mean? And and if they thought for a second that I was like, wasting their time, <laughs> they would just tell me like the like go and leave. Yeah. I, I do one. Things were going well. Like I, I think we had a great camp, uh, and we were peaking just like at the right time. But it's done now, and we're going to move forward. And probably the most annoying saying we probably had over the last couple of years: "It is what it is." <laughs> you know, exactly. <laughs> and sort sort of since then, you know, I'm guessing you probably have been making sure that you don't overexert yourself probably too quickly, obviously, because you know. The likelihood is it could potentially if you come back too soon, it would have flared up again. Yeah, no, we we take it back to training. Uh, I actually, so I actually ended up doing a half marathon. My friend was doing a. My friend was he was running for a charity called Tenny Leaf, and I just thought that I would jump in with him, and I ran a half marathon. Uh, it it probably didn't do me any favors because. I kind of got to be twins again, but apart from that, I've been back training. Um, just just been doing doing enough uh, to stay stay in shape um, for for what's to come. And, and obviously, the you know the good thing I guess for you yourself, obviously you're a personal trainer um, as well. So obviously now you know you're you're able to leave the house again. Not all your stuff's done on on Zoom and stuff like that. So it's been great to get back into the gym and sort of probably see, you know, because let's face it, obviously along with, with gym work, there's a, you know, obviously people could have mental health issues and stuff as well. So the gym work helps. Yeah. So it's been good yeah. to get back into the gym and sort of see your clients and sort of go, you know, how, how are you, how are things and sort of be that sort of ambassador sort of for their lifestyle. Yeah, no, it's great to get back to work. It's great to see people for the first time in, in many months. Uh, like we're all human. And it's human nature like they want to be around and interact with people. Um, so um, yes, it's, it's definitely good to go back. I have a few a few clients that that are getting married as well. So um, it was good to like, make make for them to get to get some sort of structure back in place. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, things in work are good. And, and I guess obviously now you know because you you know let's face it, anybody over the last 14, 15 months, obviously all this COVID sort of get into a a sort of rut, you know, where you haven't been working, whereas now you're going to be a case of, you know, when it comes to training for a fight and stuff again, you're going to have to balance, you know, your, your gym work, yeah. obviously, you, you know, your home life as well, obviously the wife and two kids, and then obviously your training as well, so it's sort of back, probably rolling it back probably, what, two years, sort of, you yeah. know, busy time, sort of looking forward to it, I guess, as well. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. Um, I'm a professional athlete, but I'm not a full-time athlete. Uh, I I gotta I gotta I gotta work. I gotta be a father. I gotta be a husband. Um, and I also gotta be a fighter. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've learned that I've learned to to find a good balance with that. And um, and my coaches and Dan Dan are flexible with me as well. So if something comes suit, they're 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 very happy. Like to work around me as well. Yeah, definitely. That's always the most important thing about as well. Um, sort of want to touch on probably something you, you posted on Twitter the other day. It, it, um, obviously, the last time we spoke, um, you sort of were hoping to 
they they fight for the world champion David Lemieux and, and obviously TV yeah. companies um, sort of put an end to that because sort of they didn't know enough about you. But it, it appears that it seems to be another opponent or another TV company sort of turned you down. Yeah, no, it wasn't TV company. Um, I got a message from my management saying that that I was offered a fight, or maybe I wasn't offered a fight, but they put my name forward mm. to fight a guy for the WBC international title. Um, the guy was 19 and 0 with 15 knockouts, and it came back that 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 they didn't fancy the fight, that they didn't want the fight. So. Again, just a bit of disappointing news, but I just feel like I feel like, like I'm on the verge of, of, of a big fight. Um, any fight that I've that I have been um, asked about, I've accepted. Um, the David Lemieux fight was obviously a big ask, a big, a, a, but a massive opportunity. This fight, um, I think, was much more much more winnable. Um, would have put me in, in in a very good position. It was top of the bill on at his own show, mm-hmm. uh, from what I hear. The guy's name, I, I just I just forget. Scalelli or Dan, Dan, Daniel Daniel Scardina. Daniel Scardina, yeah. Nin, nin, as I say, nineteen and over fifteen knockouts. So again, a big risk, a big risk for me. Um, or if that happened, I think it was it, it was risky. Right? Massive opportunity, and unfortunately, it just didn't. It just didn't happen. And and I guess obviously, we, you know, in some ways, you sort of look at it sometimes, and you go, you know, if they don't fancy it, you know, at the end of the day, fighters are fighters, so they're they they're really fighting, they're to get paid, and ultimately try and achieve their dreams in the sport. But if they're sort of turning you down and sort of going, looks like a banana skin, this guy could spark me out. They sort of sometimes not that you sort of want to blacklist them or sort of slate them in a way, but. What are they really in the sport for? If they're not going to take a challenge. Well, um, he probably thinks like, as well that he's on the verge of getting some big fights as well, and he, and they probably see me as a banana skin. Um, but at nineteen and over with fifteen knockouts, you think you'd be fairly open and, or open to be fighting like anybody really, wouldn't you? Uh, especially from what I gather, it was in his hometown for a WBC international title. Uh, so everything was like was in their favour, and unfortunately, they 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 didn't fancy the fight. And and obviously the, the fact with the WBC as well, you know, probably like, you know, you look at that as well. Probably the Lemieux fight would get you really highly ranked. Um, yeah. Obviously, Scardina fight would get obviously get you ranked with the WBC. You know, world ranking probably. You know, I know sort of off 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 air sometimes we sort of said, you know, the next sort of stage is to get world ranked and sort of. Push your sort of limits up, you know, because you probably look at look at examples of like look look Hiller, he sort of pretty yeah. much went from you know got got the European titles shot, and then all of a sudden he was fighting for a world title, and you're going, that's the route you want, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But I say it's sort of it's, it's one of these things, I guess. You know, you've always been very positive in the fact and saying, you know, it hasn't happened. Forget about it. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah. Well, uh, I would always be the kind of like. Always overthink, and when I was training with with Ray Gilney one day, I was like, "Foxy Gray, this and this and this," and he says, "Control the controllables," and it's something that's like like always stuck on me. So now I think like I just try and stay my lane and control and, and control what I can control, and yep. and I can make decisions for for a different trader or like for someone else and. Um, and if that's the way it's going to go, that's it. But as I say, I feel like I feel mm-hmm. like these opportunities and people talking about it are coming thick and fast. And I feel like I'm on the verge of, of getting a big fight. Um, I know there's something in the pipeline at the minute, which which could lead to something big for me. Um, yeah, so we're like we're like we're almost there. We're I've as we were saying just a minute ago, I'm nearly four years a pro. Which, which I couldn't actually believe. Mm-hmm. Um, a bit of, a, a few ups and downs with with big cancellations. I probably should have had a, a few more fights. Um, but four years ago, if you had said to me that you'll be eleven and zero on the verge of 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 big fights and getting offered fights with David Lemieux and accepting fights uh, for main events and stuff, 
I, I, I honestly wouldn't think I've thought it, but I'm here now, I've worked hard for it, and I'm ready to take a chance. Do, do you think sort of, you know, for anybody sort of looking back, you sort of, you know, the, the disappointment obviously fights, you know, Guerrero's card, um, obviously, you know, the night before sort of the show, um, you've obviously yeah. had other, other shows and stuff cancelled and, and things like that. Do you, you know, for, for sort of some younger ones and stuff coming up that probably haven't had the experience that yet, but will go through it probably at stages in, in their career, have you looked at that now as sort of where, where it's been bad at the time, it's probably put you in a better place now because you're prepared, yeah. you, you know, you don't sort of go, these fights are definitely happening, you always have something in the back burner to go, somebody's going to slip in the shower, something's going to happen with the show somewhere, so you're always prepared. That's it. Just like for young, like for young kids, there's only a small percentage that um, that actually fake cancellations don't affect uh, the defenders are who who probably like have achieved a lot. Like as an amateur, have put themselves in really good, like good good spots to where if a fight's cancelled financially and and then trying to get a third date doesn't really affect but it's not it's not all glamorous it's there's 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 there's, there's a lot more fighters like myself and most fighters in ireland that if a fight's called off they don't know what's next they don't know when the, when the next payday is coming um so it's it's a rocky road but um but i i've enjoyed my journey definitely and i say you know that's the kind of thing sometimes it's probably you know, in another ten years time, hopefully when you retire, you know, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep making sure you you're not gonna retire too early and things like that, you know. Um no, no, but obviously when no. you when you sort of look back and you're clear at the end, you sort of then go, I remember these wee parts here and it sort of uh, pieces together a puzzle and sort of your whole career sort of as a fighter and you know, and you you probably, you know, your your debuts are one that you probably never forget the most, but probably the, the probably the most highlight probably one for you that's a failure, you know, like yeah. you know, Many times you've probably watched that video since of you, you know, spinning around the ring. <laughs> yeah. After yeah, yeah. So yeah, I actually got a message, a message again like the other day, around the same time that that I heard about 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 my fake about the other fake getting uh, about not taking the fight, about a potential big fight at the failure if mm -hmm. it goes ahead. Obviously with COVID, um, nothing certain, but. There's big plans in place, and 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 when I heard about that, I actually had to be step back to to my last fight at the Fela, um, and just like the cheer, like the cheer and and the buzz about it, it like it just like it, it really got me feeling good. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. So it's 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 let's let's hope we can get fighting again with with fans there, with with crowd noise, people getting excited. Uh, the, <laughs> Like from my first fight, I've always had uh, massive support, so I really want that back. Yeah, definitely. As I say, it's the one thing you probably miss the most sometimes. You know, I know that yeah. obviously crowds started to return to football and stuff. You know, the last couple of days. Yeah. I think actually, United, I think actually that my United match last night, the fans weren't happy. It was one each and left early. You know, after after more than a year of not being able to see your team and then leave before the end of the game. You know, so hopefully. I'm when boxing does, I'm on the other I'm on the other fan, but we are the most, we're the hardest fans to please. Uh, if I was at that stadium watching the game after so long, I would have stayed for about two hours after just to soak it in. That's it. There was fans back in um, after the first lockdown, and and then we had to, and then there's no fans again for like another six months. So, mm. where is it? If, if you get a chance to attend any sporting event, embrace it, enjoy it, and um, soak it all up. I'm, I'm sort of hoping when boxing does return, because obviously, you know, as, as you we all well know, obviously when you made your debut in the SSE and Jacob Lucas, it was pretty much only your fans there, you know, um, for the fakes, or was on early. So hopefully when boxing does return, people forget, obviously, they'll be going to, the, you know, if they're going to the bar, you know, happy days, but they'll get there and support boxers more because... More than anything, probably when boxing does return, hopefully it's the next phase of boxing where boxers get the support more. You know, you're not having to sort of put up 50 posts a week to sort of go, I've got tickets for a show. 
you know, that mm-hmm. people be knocking down your door to get a ticket and sort of really yeah. supporting, support obviously, to keep people going, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a big part of boxing is selling tickets, and let's hope that fans and people are are really hungry to get back at it, and and it takes a bit of pressure away from the fighters that like to sell tickets. So, as I say, we're looking forward to getting back. Um, it's good to see some of the stable mates and O'Neill and a few others getting fight dates. Um, and it's looking like they're probably going to be fighting in September uh, in, in Belfast. I'll be there as a fan um, and I'll be looking forward to it. So thing, things are looking good, but we just got to be cautious. Definitely is. And, and sort of, um, so, so I guess with obviously MTK at the moment, they're sort of keeping an eye on obviously, you know, government, local government sort of legislation and COVID and British boxing yeah. border control. But, but I guess obviously probably MTK are probably maybe, and, and obviously Jamie himself are probably maybe holding you back probably on a leash probably rather than letting you go because, you know, there's a potential probably of Ulster Hall returning Obviously, the feel in August to be a bit massive mm. and unreal. Obviously, what well, be two years since the last one, and 10,000 yeah. 10, people in Falls Park. You know, it's like it's, people always go, "Oh, it's the best show, blah blah blah." This, but the atmosphere on it was unbelievable. You, you only had to look into this into the stands at times, and you were wondering were people out in day release. You know, they're going that, they're going. <laughs> that, you know, but yeah. like it was one of them shows that sort of you know had it all pretty much. You, you know, you, you probably. People getting beat that shouldn't have got beat, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, Paddy Gall getting robbed. Obviously, your your stoppage win, you know, mix mix obviously ring entrance and, and everything else. It was incredible and mm-hmm. had a bit of rain at the end and sort of people leaving, but people yeah. who were poor fans sort of stayed to the end and left like a drowned rat. You know, it just yeah. I think Falls Park had it all that night. Yeah, um, it was it was a great great show, and if I'm honest. If I had to choose between between um, a, a, a potential fight in July or holding off like the Fela, um, and it was worthwhile, I would definitely with the Fela. Um, it's it's my back door. Uh, the last experience was amazing, um, something that I'll never forget, and I really want to experience that again. So um, it's a massive show as well. It's like it's live on BT Sport. I would be sure that I would probably get um, a TV slot then, because my profile is it's it's totally wrong. Um and and yeah, it would just be amazing. So early August is probably worst case scenario for me, but or like in terms of like time, but yeah. probably bit best case because I really want to fight the field again. Who knows? I'm 32. Um, next year, like if things don't go well, I there's there's a potential that I'm not boxing. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, not that I plan like I like I have no plans like in stopping boxing at the minute. Um, but things change, uh, and I would love to experience the Falls Park at least one more time. And, and I know obviously as a boxer, I mean, you know, when you get into your thirties, like you're only coming up four years of pro and stuff as well. But do you sort of do you sort of look at it and go, how long more do you, do you think you can fight? Is it getting fights at the right times, the right opportunities? Do you sort of look at it? Do you you know? Because I know the last couple of years, obviously before Carl obviously had um, retired, but he always said it in his mind when he was going to retire. Do you sort of have same sort of thought, or just whilst you're performing at your best? You'll see how it yeah. goes. Well, it's true that time waits for nobody, but for me, like, so just, like, McCart from just, like, as you said, his name, Card had a long career. Um, what was it, about 10 years of pro, probably, even more, I don't know. Um, so he had a long, a long and, very, and a very good career, but I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm 32, but, uh, I, I I feel I feel like the best physically and mentally that I've ever been. Um, in my early twenties, mid twenties, uh, I definitely couldn't have done what I'm doing now. Uh, so I I feel good. I haven't had 
Um, I haven't had any major injuries. Uh, I'm very fresh. So I feel like I've boxed for at least another four years, but but I'm not in the game just to, like to hang about and 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 um, and hope for these these fights coming down again. Uh, I I want to see where I can go. I want to reach reach my own ceiling. Mm-hmm. Who knows where it is? Mm-hmm. Um, but but came away from nobody, and who knows like who knows what's next. Yeah, exactly. You know, you could say you could get a phone call after this interview, and then it could just change. You know, you could have a fight announced yeah. later on today. That's how quick it can go in boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like, like the like Devil and Moo thing that came up. Like, where the blue? My last that last thing there it was out of the blue. Like, this is like like I wouldn't expect none of this. Um, I have my mindset probably on the field. That's like it's what I really want. But if a big opportunity like like that guy who's nineteen and zero, they come up, it would be very hard to say no. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, th- things can change like in the blink of an eye. Just, just thinking of another one, sort of the spanner works because obviously I know Frank Warren obviously done the the last show, um, and obviously sort of looking at it and, and looking at looking at potential opponents. It's obviously within a stable. You you've obviously Lennox Clark here, the British champion. Um, mm-hmm. So you potentially end up being like. You know, Paddy Gall got the opportunity the last time, so there's a potential there that you know you could be fighting yeah. for the British title and and, and the field. Yeah. And this time, rather than being robbed, is is you know making sure that obviously, because obviously you and Paddy Gall are good mates as well, so it's it's right yeah. or wrong for him that somebody becomes a British champion in the field, and you know yeah. he's, he's to know that could happen. Exactly. Listen, Lance Clark put on a massive performance. Uh, very very impressive. Him. He's he's he's. He's he's a good fighter. Um, I don't expect that. I think I think Willie Hudson is a very good fighter as well. I think he I think he's gonna he'll come back from that. Mm-hmm. Um, but Clark was very very good. But as I say, as I say, if these fights they come up, who might have turned it down? Do you know what I mean? Uh, massive opportunities. Uh, and I believe I believe that I'm as good as I am at that level. Just been given your opportunity to do so. Yeah. Um. Obviously, looking at probably the the, the biggest fight that's sort of out there, and this is another bit of division. Um. Canelo and Billy Joe Saunders other week. Um. Yeah. Is like I know like obviously when I spoke to Dean and stuff and, and stuff in the past as well. Obviously, they believe a lot a lot of the a lot of the big players in sort of boxing are are juicing in some way. Canelo's obviously been caught with the Mexican beef and stuff in the past. Is it sort of what sort of happened within the past? Do you think sort of Tarnishing a bit of like he's fifteen years as a pro boxer, or four world champion, you know, but but it's gotten to this stage now. We're sort of looking at Canelo and going, no one's no one in this world could beat him. Um, Canelo is a massive talent. Uh, he does stuff. He does stuff that nobody can do. Uh, I think he's. I, I think he's. I think he's probably like the best in the world at the minute. Um, pound for pound. Mm. I think he's amazing better, but. For me, definitely, uh, there's that sort of red mark over his name now. Uh, it's something that I don't agree with at all. Uh, at the end of the day, you're getting in the ring to fight another person, like whether it be male or female. Um, and if you're taking something to enhance your performance, make you stronger, fitter, and better than, than what you are, then you're potentially putting... So, Another opponent's life at risk, and for me, it, it's a big one. Um, but unfortunately, and especially at the elite level, I think I think it's 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 something it's something that really needs needs looked at. Um, I think it's a lot more common than 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 like we know. Yeah, we do. Um, and I just hope that it doesn't come back and and affect anybody in, in a negative way. Yep, exactly. And you know, as I say, you know, the, the one last one last chance obviously is for for somebody to sort of dethrone sort of Canelo is obviously Caleb Plant. Um and you're sort of yeah. looking at that and you know I know yeah. I know other fighters coming out like like I must have watched uh the Andrada Canelo uh post fight video. I must have watched it at least three hundred times but yeah. 
Do, have, you, have you seen much of that? And do you not think it's probably Eddie Hearn sort of is getting to learn English because we're now seeing a different side of the canal when you're going, mm -hmm. you're a legend, you know, just with um, yeah. like, no, I, 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 I've, I've laughed at it and I've smiled at it. Uh, I, I think it's good. I think it's good to see a, a different side to him. He still, he still seems like a real good guy, but he's adding that sort of like space to that. And if it is Eddie Hearn, uh, I can see why, because Eddie Hearn, um, he's a, a, a marketing genius. Mm. And it would make sense for um, the best fighter in the world to be able to speak English, which is which is like the most popular language in the world, probably. Yeah. And as I say, it's, isn't it funny when people seem to learn a different language? The first words they learn are curse words. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all brilliant, you know. Um, yeah. But as I say, it's one of these, you know, as I say, I've watched it quite a lot of times and I think people's pinned it for other videos and stuff now as well. But it's it's sort of yeah. keeping that Canelo, even when he's not fighting, it's keeping his name out there. So maybe, as I say, going back to sort of the skate sort of thing, maybe you need to get something out there, get some people's heads and they go, he's got kind of video, yeah. Audie McCrory. When was he back? Get him a fight. <laughs> see the thing. See the thing with Canelo as well. Like he fights up. Like he fights everybody. Do you know what I mean? Like he talks nobody. He fought Floyd Mayweather at 21 years of age. Bro, I think it was 21. Do you know what I mean? Like he, he's he's a proper world champion. Um, he avoids nobody, and from late middleweight to late heavyweight, uh, it's hard to see anybody that's going to beat him. Maybe just be a case of it time sort of catches up with them. He's sort of like fifteen years of pro now as well. That started out at fifteen in Mexico. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's absolutely crazy. No, uh, he, the man doesn't get hit much, does he? So he doesn't. And and it's like his ring AQ and stuff as well. You know, not that we're just sort of you know we haven't just turned this into a, a, a chat about Canelo, but something I've noticed in his last couple of fights, like his ring AQ is is right up there. You know, at, at serious mm -hmm. levels because like he watched Billy Joe. Through that fight, duck in the head, duck in the head, tipping, tipping. and then just tying the perfection. Like he threw a shot, no one would believe his head was going to be. Um, and it was a great shot. And for me, it was 100% the right call. Um, Billy Joe was probably one shot away from from being blind or getting seriously hurt. Uh, so um, I don't think it was any cop. I think it was. I think. I think at the end of the day, we're all like, we're all here to entertain. But we also have a life outside boxing, um, and I think it was very cool. And and you look at others like um, Kel Brook and things like that. Kel Brook hasn't been the same, you know. Obviously, he yeah. both eyes, both yeah, eyes but, are done, but he's never the same. He's lost his punch, punch resistance and everything out of it. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of a lot of sort of like photographs of comparing injuries and showing like like Billy Joe's compared to even the girl, like the Aussie girl that boxed. Mm -hmm. And she had a swollen, she had a swollen eye, but Billy Joe's face was caved in. Yeah, he had broken bones in his face, but like broken bones. So I think it's the difference between having a swollen eye and having a smashed face, like your face caved in. Yeah. Um. And I, th I think I think people comparing them is just a wee bit silly. It is, and particularly when obviously you look at you know bantamweight, Shannon Courtney's not a, a massive puncher at the level of a super middleweight. You know, probably by the time they fought. They were probably, what well, say, well, they're 168, so probably about 190, you know, in, in weight in the ring and, and, and an uppercut as well. You know, when somebody's ducking down, it's probably at nearly as full pelt as can go. So it's, yeah. it's going to be massive things. Like, I was surprised he didn't go down with it. You know, it was that yeah. such yeah. a good punch. He, he, done re he, he done really well the, 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 see out, the, like the rest of the round. Um, I I think he, I think he was fighting a, a, a good fight. I had Cornell in, like in front, but Billy, Billy Joe was well in the fight anyway, and I think he showed that he is as tough as he says and he's as brave as he says, um, because because he get through about a minute and a half with a serious injury against against the the best fighter in the world. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. You know, um, obviously you you know you know much about obviously when normally you had opponents probably that sort of level they're down and they're not getting back up. So obviously being a puncher and stuff as well, you probably I guess in some ways I know what D I'm doing Owen's interview on, on Saturday and um, D watched ten Canelo fights yeah. last week. Mm -hmm. You know, so 
But obviously, you're going back in the camp and things like that. He's probably going to read traits that Canelo does. You're going to go, you think I'm Canelo, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, Listen. you're ready to It's obviously the North Belfast Canelo, and obviously now you're going to be the West Belfast Canelo. And, you know... Canelo's 5'8". I'm, I'm 6'2". It's, it's, it's not going to work. <laughs> and Lewis will be the South Belfast um, Canelo. We just need a, an East Belfast Canelo. And, you know, so if there's any boxers mm-hmm. in East Belfast that... Can punch hard and or look like Canelo. Give D Walsh a shout. That's it. We want to make all four corners of Belfast Canelos. So we, we obviously have it. You know the the complete North Belfast. You know North, South, East, West, and Belfast champion in Conor Burns. So probably trying to replicate yeah. replicate that again. Yeah. You know. That's it. <laughs> um, That's so, what champion of the world. Champion of the world, exactly. You know. As Paddy um, Burns says, he was. European champion of the world. <laughs> um, and obviously, they say the potential, obviously, potentially at the end of the year as well, as we could have a, a matchroom show back in the SSE as well. So, you know, Tommy yeah. McCarthy um, signed yeah. the matchroom yesterday. James Tennyson's there. You know, yeah. hopefully, the potential of going back. Like, well, the last team you fought there was June 2018. Yeah, McCollum Yeah. So, yeah. nearly like yeah. three years on that card as well. And you started going, Three years since the show in the SSC, you know, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. So you have do you have Matchroom there, Tommy McCarthy, just saying Matchroom, uh, which which I think is a great move for him. Um and and he's and he's and he's um and he looks like a different fighter now. Uh and then you have James Tennyson, who unfortunately lost his last fight, but has shown that he can bounce back, um, who's a great fighter. So and as well you have McCollin. Who can also put a show on? Um, if it's not the summertime, the SSC is a perfect venue. So again, I love the feel it, but I also love the Odyssey. What a, what an arena! What an arena! What an arena! Um, and I was, and I've been fortunate enough to fight there. But every time I fight there, there's a, there's a wee bit more in the crowd, and I just, and next time I just hope, I just hope there's even more again. Yeah, definitely is. You know, and obviously. Um, I think uh, you, you haven't fought probably, you know, the, the shows you've been on mm-hmm. in the, the SSE, probably I think at the most there's been about, probably about 6,000 probably for the Burnett Zaniakoff unification, but yeah. you, you've yeah. been in the SSE obviously for fronting fights and things like that where it's been sold out. Yeah. You want to yeah. experience happening in the ring as well. So it's yeah. it, it keeps yeah. them wee positive things for the future and going, give me a big fight, yeah. give me, a, you know, a good slot and get a, a, a brilliant crowd in. I remember, I remember Jimmy Conlon fighting for a world title, and he was put down, and there was chance of like ole ole, and then there was different chants, and so I said in the crowd, mm-hmm. and the buzz was amazing. It was, it, it was class. So, it's, uh, I would love to fight in something like that. John O'Carroll fight that Gardy. There was a great buzz about that, um, and and then obviously Frampton Dunner and stuff like that. Uh, I would love to experience something like that. Yes, well, as I said, there's another wee thing you sort of go, oh, I, I want to go back there and fight again. I want to go here and yeah. fight. You know? Yeah. you know, anything else? Just want to fight. Just want to fight. Just want to fight. Just fight anybody. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just make sure anybody that's close by on your street, sort of, whenever they see you come past, they close their curtains and lock the doors because you'll be knocking the door asking yeah. for a fight. Yeah. No, I need the money though. <laughs> right. for, so so fair digs at the end of the street for a fiver if anybody wants it give Potty a shout 750 750 <laughs> <laughs> anything else you want to add in the interview and obviously I think we probably had you on probably more than we planned but I guess that's yeah. the thing sometimes like we haven't sort of really been able to get a proper catch up um, yeah. obviously with luck and everything else um, so sometimes I guess the, the best way record it have a laugh and a joke and, and put it online yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, no, no, all's good. I just hope, hopefully, see the fans back, back in, in venue soon, and hear the old chant, old Cody McCrory. Um, there's no better feeling. And that's it. Thanks for catching up with me. And definitely, it's definitely good to catch up. I know you're obviously going for a session now, eleven with D. I think yeah. so. Back, back yeah. from the gym. Um, yeah. Be, well, I'm sure we're going to catch up with you again soon. Um, and obviously, I'm sure, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll not be long before you're getting some fight news. Yes. Good to hear from you. All right, Paulie. Cheers. Take care. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, mate.